In this video, I'm going to go through some examples of matrix multiplication. I find that many students have seen matrix multiplication at some point, but in some cases they're not very strong with it, and occasionally students reach quantum mechanics without having, doing, uh, having done very much mu matrix multiplication. So I'm going to work through uh, a few examples, and notice that here I'm using that notation where lowercase letters are used to actually represent each entry in the matrix. And I'm not necessarily going to do out the, the whole thing of each one, or the video will take too long. So the basic approach is that when we multiply two matrices, in this case uh, these are two by two square matrices, we're going to get another two by two square matrix. And as I'll show you with these two down here, it doesn't always have to be square matrices. There are very specific rules about the dimensionalities that can be multiplied uh, together, but in this class you're just going to get things in general that you can multiply. So the idea is to first start with thinking about row and then column. So this first entry here is going to be the first row of the first matrix and the first column of the second matrix. And what we're going to do is actually multiply then this row by that column and add them together. So an example is A is times E plus B times G. So then, this is all then one entry. So you can imagine that these are numbers and you would get one integer here, or in this case, they're variables, but this is one entry. The second entry then is going to be the first row times then the second column. So that's AF plus BH. So now, for the second row, we're using the second row of that first matrix, and again then the first column, and then the second column. So CE plus DG, and then CF plus DH. And you can imagine that if these are just integers, the order itself doesn't matter per se. And you want to leave enough space so it's really clear where the different entries um, occur. So this is what that matrix multiplication would look like. How we can write that out in variables is that if that first matrix was A, we can say A times B equals matrix C, where this is now our matrix C. So remember we're using capital letters to represent that. Now if you want, you can write this as A times B. That's going to mean the same thing. So now if we look at this situation, I'm going to call these sorts of objects, where it either has one column or one row, as vectors. And so in this case, we have a matrix multiplied by a vector. We can follow the same rules. So in this case, we have two columns, uh, sorry, two rows in this first matrix, but then only one column. So let's see what happens. We get A times X and then B times Y. But then we don't actually have a second column to do. Down here, we have C times X plus D times Y. So notice that this is again going to give us a vector. So this is something we're going to see a lot in this class where we have a matrix applied to a vector and we get back a vector. Um, we're end up going to end up calling these operators. So notice that again this is just one term and this is one term. Now when we get down to just vectors we have to think through a little more carefully. Here we had gone row times column Notice that this has two rows and this has two columns. So what happens here is that first entry is row times column, AC, row times column, AD, row times column, row times column. So when you multiply uh, two vectors where it's first a column vector by a, a row vector, you actually get back a two by two matrix. So this gets into the, that idea that certain things can be multiplied together and certain things cannot. But now let's flip the order, and we get a different type of entry. So first it goes row times column. So notice this is just C, A, row, column, plus D, B, and we're done. So this was a 2 by 2, and this is actually a 1 by 1. So we would call this a scalar. This is just one value. So the key here is to notice that A times B 
is not necessarily the same as b times a. In general, it is not. And so when these were integers, for instance, 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. But in this case, when you change the order of matrices, or in this case vectors that you're multiplying, you don't get the same thing back. So it's really important that you keep it in the right order, and you understand as we're going through quantum mechanics what order things are meant to be multiplied in.